Hey everyone, so I'm just going to go through the code I've written for motion detection and tracking for the ESP32 cam water gun. Um, so I'm just going to start by taking you to, through some of the theory that I've used. Um, and it's quite simple. So what I did is I started by watching this video by um, Makers Mashup, ESP32 cam as a directional motion sensor. And what he's done is he's broken the the image up into a, into a bunch of vertical strips. So along the horizontal axis, so he's used 10 strips and he's looked for the strip with the most activity in it. And then that's where he's pointed his, um, his servo or his stepper motor. And I'm using a camera mounted on a servo, but he was using like a big eye or something on a, on a stepper motor. Um, so now the way he's extracted his features is pretty good and I've used that, but I've changed the processing quite a bit from what he's done. Um, so I'm going to go through that now and discuss that. Um, so what he's done is he's downsampled the image um, into four by four squares, so 16 pixels altogether, and he's taken the average gray level over these 16 pairs, 16 pixels, and he's compared the average gray level from the current image to the average gray level in the previous image for each corresponding square and if it's above a threshold then there's activity in this in the square now um now what he does is so he's broken it up into 10 10 vertical strips and each strip he's broken up into another into another eight strips and then if there's activity in one of those strips so if one of these squares has um has a previous square which which where the difference is above the threshold then he puts a one here and then if one of these squares along here um, exceeds the threshold then a one here and a one here now what I've done is instead of using a one because it, it is susceptible to noise if you if you activate each each of these vertical strips just based on one square so I've done a count. So I've counted the number of squares that are above the threshold where the difference between the previous frame and this frame is above the threshold. So that might be three, that might be four, that might be one, and this might be two. And then I've summed these all together and I've done the one with the maximum count is um, is the one with the which is the most active. That's where the motion is. And the other thing I've done is also, if you're breaking the image up into 10 strips, um, you, it can get a bit noisy because one strip might have a bit of noise in it, which is which is not the actual, which is not the actual strip. So to deal with this noise, what I do is I break the image up into three strips. So I start out with three strips, and I find the strip which has the most, which has the most, um, which has the most motion in it so whichever one is the most active out of these three so say it's the left strip and this one has the most activity in and then what I do is I break this I break this left strip up into a further three strips so one and I find and I do another search on these three to find which one of these three has the most motion. And I found that that kind of eliminates a lot of noise and, um, and smooths it out a bit. So say it's this one out of these three with the most motion, then this one is the, is the strip where I, where I point my servo and camera to. So I'll take you through the code now, but before I do, I'll give you a demonstration on this little test rig I've set up. Uh, which I've just set this up for debugging and tuning the parameters um, before I connect the actual ESP32 to the electric water gun. And this is a little bit more convenient because I can just have this at my, at my desk while I do the debugging. So I've got a little test rig set up here, which I'm using for debugging, which is just a, a pan tilt mechanism that I got off AliExpress with a ESP32 cam attached to it. And I'm just gonna press, um, I'm just gonna press track on the controls and see if it tracks me. All right, so here's the controls. Uh, this is the streaming controls and I've added a button 
track and track off. So I have to press the track button to start the tracking. All right, so I'm just gonna walk around and see if it tracks me. Okay, so that's pretty good. So I'm just going to go over the code really quickly, just the outline of it, because I have put it up on GitHub, and if you've got any questions, you can leave them in the comments. So where I've put the motion tracking algorithm, which I got the original code from Make a Mashup, I've put it in, in the stream handler. And the reason why I've put it in the stream handler is because this is where the the image gets captured and this is image gets captured by the camera that I need um, for the motion tracking. So now the stream handler is like running on a separate process. So it's kind of running on its own, its own task basically to the loop. And in the loop is where I put the move servo functions to move the servo left and right. Um, so the way I communicate between the stream handler routine and the loop is through a bunch of global booleans. So tracking on basically just means that the tracking button's been pressed on the web, web interface page and finished tracking is true if the servos are finished moving because um, I don't want to mistake the motion for the servos with any outside motion that I'm trying to track. Um, so while the servos are moving we don't run this part. And then first capture, that's just if we're that's just if we're initializing it. So all that does is initialize the previous frame with the current frame. And we call that uh, we set that to true after we've moved the servo, because after we've moved the server, we're kind of starting to track motion again and when we first start it. So it calls this update frame, which um, just copies the current frame to the previous frame. And then if we've detected motion, this returns true, and then we set do tracking to true and finish tracking to false and these get returned back to the loop. Um, so I'll just show you the loop. Um, so if do tracking and tracking on is true, then we move the servo. So we move left if we've detected a region of interest on the left hand side. Um, otherwise we move right. And then we fire the water gun and we wait 100 milliseconds just to let the servo settle so that we don't um, we don't detect the motion of the servo. So like I said, um, any questions, just leave them in the comments. And thanks for watching, and I'll hopefully see you in the next video.